what I was saying was these details are entered in the page level flows, right? And for example, say tomorrow, uh, they say uh, your lead says do not enter these first name, last name, but enter something like, um, uh, let's say, John Doe. Okay. And day after tomorrow, somebody says do not use John Doe, let's use Jim Doe. Okay. Then what we are trying to do is if you want to change the data, we have to go to these Java classes and change. And may not be just one class, we mean we may be uh, maybe changing multiple classes and that is a big hazel right a maintenance wise it's big headache and the best way is to just put them in one place one update should be enough i mean once you update that one single place it should be done with that that's the way it is just like the reusable function set text if i want to like do some uh, modification here I'll just do it one place. That is the beauty of the reusability. If I call, if I will calling this driver dot find element, and if I need to change multiple updates, let's say, then I have to be doing it different different places, and I have to keep track of all of those, which is a big headache. For example, after setting text, I want to print to the console. Okay, I'll quickly demonstrate you what is the advantage of doing reusable functions. So after let's say set text. Okay, let's start from the beginning here. First, I click the link. Okay, so after clicking the link, I want to print something to the console that I click the link for so and so x path. So sys out here, and I'll say click the link, and with the x path expression so and so. So the what x path expression I like this one so this will be like uh, user friendly so immediately whoever looks at reporting wise also this will be better because who looks at the console they will say hey okay this we just clicked on the link with this particular xpath expression so then we know okay so we can further enhance it using at this part point of time we clicked on it so that later okay so now i want to put this everywhere so that we will know what we are doing just by reading the console notes you know without having to worry about re uh, re-executing or look at the screens screenshots will be later but this is just for the beginning reporting okay so here i will put one more sys out and here what i'm trying to do is i just set text right set text for what set text for With this so and so export expression, and uh, I set something that means I actually typed something into the text box. So let's also put that. Uh, let's say one more hyphen plus input value. Okay, so when we see this in action, we will understand what is the significance of this. So I will just update this. And select drop down also. Let's do the same thing. So I'll copy this and put it here instead of cell set text. It would be called select drop down value and x path expression will be x path expression and input value is input value. So exactly these values must match, otherwise, it will say that's not the variable, right? okay so now get text get text also we will print we are returning but we will we can print also just remember that whenever the function is returning something the return has to be return statement has to be the last so i had to put before this i cannot put this is out after this this is out and this is for get text i'll just print the function name and for what x path i am getting the text i will also print that x path expression and for what what is the value i'm getting that means what is the value i'm returning i will also print that the hyphen as a separator plus and this is a value value is value so i'll just call value okay so one more i think or oh, two more this out and simply put this is up to you whatever you want to print to the console you put it it's not that you have to print exactly the way i am doing here 
plus xpop expression that's it and for implicit tweet also we can put we don't have to put but let's put it in here. so this is just to indicate that we have waited for so and so time okay the time is indicated by max timeout that means that is the user choice wherever i'm calling so i'll put it here is it wait max timeout so let's put little elaborately so waited for so and so max timeout and we don't know what 20 or 50 is so we have to say explicitly it's a seconds okay so this will be very elaborate okay so now let's run and see how differently the console will look like so right now the console looks just this simple okay so before this starting of the test case i can also run this out okay so this should say okay let's put a banner nice banner test case starts and you can print test case name here so that would be demo demo 80 right let's put this here and banner and okay so and at the end of the test we'll also put one more banner the test case is ended something like that don't worry we will move all these to the appropriate places uh, but i want to show you from the beginning how we do it then we will do in real time how we do the modifications test case test case ends okay so now <clears throat> just for the uh, sake of showing you the console output okay right now there is just one two passes right it's not very elaborative so what we are going to do is we are going to print the actions the actions we perform in elaborate fashion so that we can share this in report later point of time not right now okay so the name and first name and last name is changed just now so whatever i changed it's typing over there okay so this is where we stopped and the main intention of this run execution is to show you this so what is the difference you uh, uh, observed just now did you notice any uh, thing new in this new execution lots of detail correct the details which are important for the reporting so what we have done so far is just execution that's not all execution is just 50 percent the remaining 50 percent is reporting you have to let others know that this is what we what i have done so that is important to show show up show up right so this is exactly for the same purpose whatever we have done at each and every point it is printing to the console so that it, you can immediately say just by looking at this what on went inside the execution so i started the test case clicked on the link for this guy register okay xpath is also clearly visible waited for 20 seconds perfect then i set text that means for this first name i type jim in the last name i type do phone number so and so all these details are entered then i also put some uh, this thing what is it called validation fail we can put validation uh, sys out validation just before if you want to do that you can do that and then get text and then one more validation note validation that's his pass this is fail okay this this fail is deliberate don't worry it's not a fail actually and some more inputs here the uh, passengers count from so and so city to so and so city and so and so date and blah 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 and test case ends this is not true end but there is still some more to go for now this is how the output i mean this this is what you can show it to your lead later pointer will take it to some property file and put it in nicely in some word format or video format but right now this is better than what we have been doing right so reporting is little bit better okay so now that's good let's get back to the data driven testing data driven testing in the yeah. i have a question yeah yeah go ahead 
Okay, uh, could you explain a little bit throws, throw and throws? Uh, what is the difference? I know throw for exception handling, but could you a little bit explain? Oh, like okay, I, I was gonna show that, but you asked in. <laughs> okay, so right. here I am throwing interrupted exception, right? Okay, yeah. so the exception is the topmost. The topmost class is throwable, and in which there are exceptions, different kinds of ex exceptions, like no such element found exception, arithmetic exception, interrupted exception, file not found exception. There are different, right? And if you just want to throw the exception, just mention the topmost exception. This means any exception. Okay. And the other way is just put everything in a try catch block. And the way the best way to do is just surround with try catch block. Okay. Okay. So now all the coding is embedded or surrounded with my try block okay now i want to catch an exception in case of any exception i want to catch it okay now let's say i want to do something at any cost in case of exception or no exception i told you in the java class right exception only then you put finally block okay so finally block will always be executed and in the final block i want to close the browser I mean, in case of execution, successful execution or not, I just want to close the browser. So that's my, that's the usage, usage of my final block. Okay. The problem with final block is the driver has to be initialized outside try. So right now we have initialized the driver inside try. So finally the driver is not reachable in the final block. So let's do this outside and initialize with null. Okay. So then I'll come back here. So this is the technique just like Return statement here has to be the last statement in the re returning function. So in this case, I'll just initialize this driver with null, and in the try block, I will assign the appropriate value for the driver that is coming from test run setup launch Chrome driver or Firefox driver. Okay. Now everything is set. Now to answer your question, for example, I want to abruptly end the test case in case of exception then you just throw the exception okay what this will do is this will stop the execution completely it will make it uh, i mean completely halt the execution so let's say you want to continue the execution irrespective of whether the exception occurs or not then just don't mention it okay so that's a technique did you understand? Uh, yes. Okay. So now we don't need the throws declaration anymore, right? The throws declaration is needed if you do not mention try cache block. Okay. But since I already in embedded my whole code inside try cache, finally, I don't need to add throws declaration to the function. Okay. Either you add throws declaration or put everything in the try cache block. So try cache block is better because you will be able to. Uh, control what to put in try and what to put in finally finally is also possible right so this is the best way okay i'll see once this is the best way but uh, if you're using test ng there are other ways like you can provide different annotations that we will see later i don't want to confuse you guys right now so let's use this approach okay so and also a test case ends i can put it in finally right because that has to be the last after the closing browser my test case end. so so this is important the question question was important question too and that's standard interview question why uh, if you want if execution uh, i mean exception occurs then if you want to stop the execution of the particular test case what would you do that's a question then simply the answer would be in the cache block i'll just simply throw the exception and if the question is let's say let's rephrase the question uh, for example there are 100 test cases you are running right and uh, for example i don't want to stop the execution if something occurs in test case number five i want to investigate and i want it to repeatedly try okay something you can put some wrapper function time wrapper and what is how do you achieve it so just simply don't add throws simply catch the exception and it won't throw the exception so this throws can be added all the way till the first function the first function in any class will be the operations function right so you can also put these things in the try cache block 
so right now we will just move forward slowly because if i do everything right and uh, you might get confused so same way you can add strike class try catch block and what if you add throws there it will come all the way till here and throw so you can add throws or not add throws both ways okay so let's just finish the we have 15 minutes i'll take okay okay so today we have seen a little bit about reporting from the console perspective and try cache block from the test case level right test case level how do we uh, control the this thing so for you guys you can actually experiment with this as a homework just make this throw exception and just add first and just comment this and see what happens okay just experiment it for yourself and see what happens that's for your homework 